Hey, hey, hey! The new Fat Albert Show with Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, plus the Brown Hornet. You'll have some fun now with me and all the gang learning from each other while we do our thing. This is Bill Cosby coming at you with music and fun. And if you're not careful, you may learn something before we're done. So let's get ready, okay? Hey, hey, hey. is shorter grass. That's your fault, Fat Albert. Why is it Fat Albert's fault there's no grass? On account of nothing grows in the shade, get it? <laughs> Rudy, if humor was money, you'd be flat broke. <laughs> Just put the ball in there, pancake. Pancake? Why you call me a pancake? Because you're about to get fled. <laughs> <laughs> Little creep. <laughs> da, that's boy, Rudy, old boy. Da, that's bumping in the old pellet in there. No, no, stick in there, kid. Da, that's the way to fire him in. Yeah! Strike one. Da, that's baby, that's that kid. Way to fire. Never saw it. Blew it right past him. Hey! That's showing him, Rudy, old kid. Strike two. Okay, Fat Albert. This is the game-winning pitch. That's right. What are you pointing at? That's where the game-winning pitch is going. You sure can play. What an arm. You're new here, aren't you? Yeah, we just moved in. We got a big game Sunday. Wanna play? Yeah, okay. Great, it's a father and son game. Bring your dad. Uh, uh, my father can't make it. He's, uh, uh, out of town. Oh, that's too bad. Hello, boys. I'm Mrs. Dietrich. I'm Fat Albert, and this is the gang. Glad to know you. This is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Glad to meet you. Hey, hey glad, glad to meet to you, meet Michelle. You. Well, I guess we'll be moving along. Sure, sorry your dad's out of town. But you come to the game anyway. Why did you tell them dad is out of town? I, I, well, I didn't want them to meet him. Marcus. Sorry, Mom. I don't want to talk about it. Hmm. One thing is clear. Marcus doesn't want Fat Albert and the gang to meet his father. I wonder why. But hey, just a minute. Let's join the gang. It's the Brown Hornet time. It's not a bird. It's not a bee. It's the brown hornet. <laughs> As you recall, last time we left our hero, the brown hornet, and his trusty pal Stinger, hopelessly trapped in a giant space trash compactor. As a diabolical scientist prepared to activate the scrunch button. Using the Brown Hornet's superpowers, 
they naturally escaped unharmed. <laughs> now, we pick up our heroes as they face an even worse threat. a fine job of solo flying, Stinger. Now, for a smooth landing. <coughs> that robot almost hit us. Had it not been for my lightning-like hero move, we would have struck him or it. This calls for an explanation. I am the brown hornet. Even mighty heroes like myself get lost. Can you assist me in getting our bearings? Of course, I know. You're from a planet, Solar Plexus. I will draw a map all the way back for you. Why do you bounce up and down like that? Oh, I can't help it. <laughs> I've had it as long as I can remember. That's why my sister, Poodle, sends me out here when she's having friends in. She's ashamed of me. <laughs> you serve him space cookies and tea while I go have a little chit-chat with his sister, Poodle. <laughs> Yeah, but how do you know where Voodoo lives? No time to explain that now! Miss Poodoo, I am... Don't tell me! I know! I know! You are the Brown Hornet! I am here to talk to you about your brother. I have nothing to say about him. Good day! I met your brother and found him helpful and a worthwhile space citizen. Why? Do you hide him from your friends? Why? Because of his ridiculous jumping movements. Maybe he cannot help that. He can stop it if he wants to. No, Poodoo, he cannot. I suspect his malfunctioning originated as a computer error when he was assembled. <laughs> Do not blame him for something he cannot control. If only he didn't... didn't... Embarrass you? Yes. I understand your feelings, but you must understand. He needs your support. He needs your love. Desperately. Who do? Have you ever had space mumps? Yes. That was an illness you couldn't control. Your brother's computer problem is like that. But space mumps is a sickness. So is your brother's jumping. Being ashamed of him or getting angry won't solve anything. You must help him to help 
himself. Maybe you're right. Would you bring him back to the house? Better than that, we'll bring the house to him. Sister, what are you doing here? Thanks to the brown hornet, I understand some things a lot better. He showed me how I can help you. You and I have a lot to talk about. Well, I think Poodoo and her brother are going to be all right. Young Riddle! What's as big as a ten-story building, has three heads, a forked tail, and six legs? As big as a ten-story building, has three heads, a forked tail, and six legs? I don't know. I don't know either, but there's one headed straight for us! Oh, no! Will our daring hero survive their latest dangerous threat? If so, how? Tune in next time for another exciting episode of The Crown Hornet! That brown hornet. He knows that we only become smart when we realize what happens when we're not smart. He showed Poodoo that being ashamed of her brother or getting mad wasn't the answer. She had to help him help himself. Get out of the park, Dad. Not with my pitching. Now you see it. Now you. Oh, don't! Tony, you remind me of our school building at six o'clock in the morning. Okay, small fry. Why do I remind you of the school building at 6 o'clock in the morning, huh? No class. <laughs> hey, that was a great hit. Yeah, sure wish your dad could have made this game. Yeah, but he won't be back in town for a long time. Oh, no. Dad, what are you doing here? Howdy, son. Uh, just found out about the game. Now, this field's in terrible shape. Uh, fella could hurt himself badly with all these uh, ob obstacles around. Dad, let's go home. Not until I get my turn at bat. Dad, please. Oops. What's wrong with Marcus's dad? I think he's drunk. <laughs> now we know why Marcus made up that story about his dad being out of town and why he didn't want the kids to meet him. Then Mr. Dietrich swung the bat, and it flew out of his hands. It was real embarrassing, Mom. Uh, don't be too harsh. Maybe Marcus's father couldn't help it. What do you mean? Your father means perhaps Mr. Dietrich is sick. He wasn't sick. He was drunk. Well, it's not as simple as that. Sit down, Albert. Let's talk about it. Shh. Oh, 
Okay, let's go. Just a moment. Might I ask where you're going? Well, we're leaving. Leaving? We can't stay in the same house with Dad anymore. You can't do that. You have no place to go. Besides, I need you. Your father needs you. You know he loves you. We love him, too. But we don't understand him. He's sick, and we have to help him. Don't go, please. We'll keep in touch, Mom. bother us. What more could you ask for? Quite a lot more. You want to go back? No. Then let's go. Be my guest. Yep, just climb out like in gymnastics. Hmm. Running away from home isn't too cool. Michelle and Marcus are about to find that out. I'm afraid there's danger ahead, like real soon. Stick around and see. Quick! Hand over hand! a long way. They're safe, but they're sure wet. We gotta find a place to dry off. I know where. The clubhouse. Sure feels better now. Okay if we stay here a few days? I don't know. Leave me home. It's not such a good idea. Just till we find someplace else. Tell you what, I've been talking to my parents about your uh, problem, and they told me about a, a place. And if you promise to do something for me, I'll let you stay here. What is it you want us to do? Go to a meeting. Meeting? What kind of meeting? It's a group of people just like you. The problems are just like yours. This is it. I'm Joan. Make yourself at home. We don't ask for your names unless you want to tell us. It's fine either way. You can join in the discussion, or you may just listen if you wish. You were saying, Carol, you've learned to overcome that anger about your mother's drinking? Pretty well, I think. Not all the way yet, but I'm getting there. I used to feel the same way about my older brother's drinking. What's more, I blame myself for it. Now, well, I know better.
how about if it's your dad? What do you do when he embarrasses you? Hmm, I understand how you feel. But the thing to remember is that another person's addiction to alcohol is no reason for you to be ashamed or embarrassed. You're not responsible for your parents' drinking, so don't waste time and energy feeling guilty. But our dad keeps getting worse all the time. Can't we help? Yes, but first you have to help yourself. You've got to learn all you can about alcoholism. You'll learn that when a person can't control his drinking, it's very much like a sickness. You'll learn to treat him as you would anybody you love who is sick, with courtesy and respect. It's not an easy thing to do, but we must learn not to pass judgment on anyone. You know something? That's what Mom was trying to tell us. My name is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Mine is Marcus. Glad to have you two with us. Uh-uh. Things are starting to work out for Marcus and Michelle. Like the Brown Hornet said, being ashamed and getting angry isn't the way to solve a problem. How do you solve it? Well, a good start is by bringing it out into the open. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's an alcoholic problem that affects you, don't be ashamed of it. Talk to your teacher or your nurse or coach or to a minister, rabbi or priest. Any one of them can direct you to a place like the one you just saw. You'll meet people your own age with problems just like yours. Together, you'll find ways of working with them so you can work it out. Give it a try.